and welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's Garbage People and look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I am your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. Hello, and good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing so good, and I just, you know what? I just received a major update. Oh, okay. Stop the presses. What's up? This just in, my partner's mom has changed the face of her Apple Watch to be a picture of us. Okay. There was a lot of things I was braced and prepared for, and that was not one of them. (laughs) It just popped up on my computer. Yeah. So uh, I I made the watch. I made the watch face. Wow. I, for Christmas last year, I sent a picture of Winston and I to my grandma, like a framed photo. Uh-huh. Like a, we found like an online company that does it and it's hanging up. And then the rest of the family got like really jealous. And I'm oh, like, wow. So now I know what I have to send everyone for Christmas this year, which is like a relief. Yeah. Just framed photos. Like, I mean, that's kind of the most baller move is like, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Here's a picture of myself. Although I'm not going to lie to you. If you gave me a framed photo of you, Winston, I would be happy with that gift. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're a photogenic couple. I feel like like I get happy when people send me Christmas cards. Are, are the days of sending people photos of yourselves gone? Like maybe we need to bring that back. I, I'll just hand them out like on the street corner. Like I've got, like, hey, here's a couple of me. Like I, I look really good on this day, and I want everyone to remember this. You know, this is a really good segue into why I'm trash. Oh, let's hear it. I recently have, I, I got mad. I got mad at my partner. Okay. Uh, I got mad at Taylor because he took this really great picture of the dog and he made the dog look skinny. (laughs) Like I literally saw the picture. I was like, Oh my God, Athena looks thin. And I was like, why can you take pictures, skinny pictures of the dog, but you can't take them of me. (laughs) Yeah. Like, (laughs) and I'm like, my, Emotion in the moment, like before my logic caught up with me, was dead ass serious because like we went we go out all the time, we do cute things, I get I get dressed up and mm-hmm. sometimes I'll get a good picture of me, but then other times it's just like just fuck. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why why is it so hard for you? And then I get I get a good take of him, like first fucking shot. Yeah. I feel like I I recently went to Redbird in downtown LA. Very mm-hmm. shishi, very nice. Mm-hmm. And I asked Winston to take a couple of photos of me because I was dressed up, you yeah. know. And then I get the photos back, and I'm like, "Did like I know this is a good camera, and I know I look good, but like how how did you capture this this face this angle?" And then he grid posted one of them. He did like a montage, and I was like. Thankfully, I wasn't front and center, number one picture on a great yeah. post, but I was number two, and I look like shit. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. And I'm like, do you love me at all? Like, you didn't even put a filter on it. Yeah, yeah. One of the first, like, photos that Taylor put of me on his Instagram, like, when we first started dating, was, like, a photo that he took with his film camera, and I just looked fucked up in it. And I'm like, yeah. and he's like, I think it's a great picture. And like all the comments are great, you know, like all these nice things. And I'm like, they're nice things because everyone's happy for you. Right. Okay? They right. don't know what what kind of dime piece you're with. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. you're shooting me bad. Yeah. Like get better. Like get Take better. Take some classes. <laughs> I need this from you. As my partner, I need this good grid post from you. Yeah. I <laughs> I I cook nice things from the New York Times recipe book and I and I do my hair and I say nice things all the time. The least you could do is drop $600 and take some photo classes. The learning annex. Come on. Like what are we even doing here? 
<laughs> anyway, so whatever. Athena looks really fucking thin in her photo. And <sighs> meanwhile, I looked beautiful last night and I'll never know. You'll never know. No uh, one will ever remember. Why are you trash this week? Well, I have a historical trash. Mm. And when I was in my later stages of college, one of the things that we liked to do was go into small towns it, or surrounding my college town and go to like local diners and steakhouses and like try to find those like hidden gyms within an hour drive. And we found some like really great ones. And I had my wisdom teeth removed right before I moved to LA. Like I, I graduated in May, had my wisdom teeth removed like a week later. And I thought I was ready to enter the world, but uh -huh. I was still on a lot of Vicodin from oh. the pain. And I love pie as, as maybe people don't know that about me, but I love pie. Okay. And in this small town diner, we're already causing a scene just by being young people. Sure. And they, I can't order, I couldn't hardly eat because of the pain. And so I was like on Vicodin, didn't have much in my stomach. And so they ordered me a piece of pie thinking that would be soft and Erica can eat this. <laughs> and I loudly yelled, like, I took like a bite. I was in so much pain and I just oh yelled. I was like, I hate my pie <laughs> in like the most Southern pitiful voice I could muster. And the waitress was like, oh, do you want me to bring you another slice? And I was like, oh, oh my God. No, it's not you. It's, it's my mouth. Like I just like <laughs> caused a scene in this small town Aww. diner because <laughs> I couldn't eat. And then I hated the slice of pie that I was given. <laughs> I hate my pie. I hate my pie. And so I was uh, I was like, I'm going to take a break from the group outings for a little bit until my mouth completely heals. Oh, man. Wisdom teeth are rough. It was ghastly. And I dry socketed, of course. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was rough. But How did you do that? I guess I sucked in too much air and made the i don't know i don't know i dry socketed it it was unpleasant <sighs> unpleasant yeah you know what you know what else is unpleasant the music of puddle of mud thank you so much what a beautiful segue yeah you you rocked the shit you started it man you set me up and home run you yeah you spiked it down you teed it off you hit the home run <laughs> according touchdown. to touchdown <laughs> so I was just trying to get another sport in there <laughs> alley -oop, you know alley an alley -oop, an yeah. assist and an alley -oop. uh huh goal according Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing we missed is like ping pong and I don't know what you call it when you hit a goal in ping pong <laughs> <laughs> me neither <laughs> From Consequence.net, my favorite website, <laughs> Puddle of Mud's Wes Scantlin blames bad singing on groupies. Quote, they keep you up too late. I have some questions. Number one, how did he get worse? H how? H like, when you start at the bottom, the only way you can go is up. But right? like, Puddle of Mud, I'm just going to be honest, still at the bottom. She fucking hates me. <laughs> uh, he says they're keeping you up and you don't get no sleep and then you suck at singing. Okay. So, like, oh, wait, never mind. Sorry. I, I'm still having, I've read this. I've read this. I prepped for this. I still can't wrap my head around this article. <laughs> Yeah, it's like he's blaming bad performances on groupies. And I'm like, first of all, who didn't love you enough so that you became a puddle of mud groupie? Okay, that's what's crazy. I'm like, who, who, what groupies do they get? Like, what, what kind of groupies do you get when you perform at county fairs? Bam! <laughs> <laughs> just like, that's when people are like oh this band just like disappeared i'm like no they're just playing county fairs now and you yeah. just don't go to enough county fairs 
I don't know. I probably, if I was a groupie at a county fair, I'd probably keep someone up too, but it's because my stomach was turned over from the fried Oreos I ate. Oh. oh Not because um, I was trying to bang the lead singer of Puddle of Mud. <laughs> He returned to the theme in this interview and he said, man, they'll keep you up late. Man, they will just keep you up late, too late. And whatever thingies they've got in their pockets, we don't need that either. So yeah, the best thing to do is just kind of stick to with the wolf pack. Just hang with your pack and do not steer away from safety. And then just stay focused. Stay the course. I'm like, what motivational like <laughs> talk did you go to in the past? He says that he's been writing rock songs for three decades. It's 11 p.m. comes around. You'll find me sitting on an acoustic guitar. I've had many, many, many of different type of women that just try to rip me off the freaking acoustic man. And I just got to keep going and tell them to get the freaking heck out of my face. So those bitches can go fucking can fucking go suck it. Who says the freaking heck and then says fucking go suck it? <laughs> Bitches go fucking suck it. You heck heads. You heck. Yeah. Like the the put the puddles, the puddles of mud. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like an appropriate groupie name for this. <laughs> and that sucks. Like groupies like that's such a terrible naming of of a group of people. Like these band aids. <laughs> I just want to help him. I, ju I just want to go hug him and be like, you don't need to do this. He said, there's nothing wrong with women, but you've got to stay the course and you've got to be a professional person or else you'll wake up and whatever chicks, they are keeping you up and you don't get no sleep and then you suck at singing. You know, I appreciate that this article like did his quotes verbatim. Yes, they didn't clean them up. They didn't church them up at all. They were like, exactly the word. Have they done anything but uh, she hates me? According to according to the internet, which I'm a part of, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> there's, <clears throat> okay. there's other songs listed, but none that I have ever heard of. Apparently, this guy's a little bit of a, you know... A little bit of a wild child because he also had an interview last month where he uh, freestyle rapped and then he claimed that he had COVID three times. So mm, probably got a vaccine that on, for that. Yeah, probably blaming that on groupies too. Yeah. Speaking of groupies, <laughs> let's take a trip down to Bogota. Oh. Uh, and this next story is sent in to us by Adam Cantley. Thank, Thank you, you, Adam. From CNN.com. Colombia is putting its cocaine hippos on birth control. I think we've talked about the cocaine hippos before on Trashy Trashy, if I'm not mistaken. We have talked about the cocaine hippos, but they're they're getting out of control. And much like a, I can't control my teen on Sally Jesse Raphael, they're going to go on birth control. Yeah. So to refresh your memory, Pablo Escobar had a... Um, hippos along with a lot of other zoo animals so when he got everything raided and blah 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 like some of the hippos got out and it has led now to an overpopulation of hippos in colombia and so they've been trying to figure out how to like i think you can legally kill them now if you're a hunter and then they tried sterilizing them like neutering the male hippos yeah, but the surgical <clears throat> sterilization is too dangerous and demanding to scale up. Only 11 of the hippos have been sterilized thus far this way. So they had to think of a different way. Insert Gonicon, a blow dart <laughs> laden with a contraceptive drug. It's a much cheaper option <clears throat> to surgery. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I just... I just picture like somebody's like, I studied for 14 years and I became a veterinarian. And yeah. my first gig is to throw blow darts at yeah. hippos. It's like, you see, is that a hippo a girl or a boy? It's a girl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and how do you even tell the difference until you, unless you're right there? It also like, because, okay, so then you have to give them three doses. 
That's like the best compared to horses, which they've also done this with. They need three doses. How do you keep track of who's gotten what dose? I mean, it's like the <laughs> HPV shot, you know, for young women. Like how who how are we supposed to remember how many shots we've already gotten? Well, and the, the way they're tracking the efficiency of the drug is by measuring hormone levels in hippo feces. But like, oh. how close are you to a hippo to know like, oh, this one just shit. That's that. This is this one's specific feces. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This. They're doing their best. You know, it's a it's a weird, I guess, moral thing of like, is it nice to do this to these hippos but also if it's getting out of control and fucking up your ecosystem then i feel like that answers your question i'm curious like my iud hurt you know oh my god when i take it out when i take it out in a couple years and i need to then seek a different style of birth control you know could i perhaps just get hit with blow darts full of birth control. Yes. Could <laughs> could I arrange that service with my gynecologist to where she just in the wild? Yeah. I don't want to know it's coming. I just <laughs> I just want to be at dinner and be like, oh god damn. Oh god damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shot with a blow dart. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's what I want. Yeah. That I don't be... want to know it's coming. <laughs> yeah. That would be helpful, I think. Just, I mean, it's so hard to remember to take the pill, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, if I could just hire someone to blow dart me. Yeah. At random. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I could even, it, it might be like a nice experience to share between partners, you know? Like, of yeah. like, I'm walking the dog and then he's, <laughs> I didn't, I don't know that he's five steps behind me. Just. <laughs> Oh, so Pablo Escobar's collection started out with one male and three females. So, like, there's been inbreeding of these cocaine hippos. Erica, there's inbreeding everywhere. Okay, look at the royals. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Cousin marrying cousin. What can we do, you know? What can we do? Hippos pose a threat to agriculture and the security of the people in the affected areas. In 2020, a hippo attacked and left a 45-year-old man seriously injured. They say hippos are the most dangerous animals in the jungle. Yeah, they're like gnarly because they're aggressive. Yeah. Along with being huge. Yeah. And they'll, they'll get you with those weird stump teeth they have. Yeah. Yeah, they're not cute and cuddly. Like, hippos will fuck you up. Yeah. Speaking of fucked up, Mm. let's get into our next story from thesun.com, which isn't the sun owned by Rupert Murdoch? I think it's bad. I don't know. It's probably the trashiest news source. Yeah. So, Kourtney Kardashian was allegedly freaking out and acting and acted bratty. Uh, on a flight when her now fiance, Travis Barker, lost his phone. So they told the publication that even when Poosh founder was asked to sit by a flight attendant, she kept saying, give me five more minutes. So this is all from the perspective of another passenger saying, Mm -hmm. oh, she she wasn't being nice and she was acting like a child and whatever and then travis wasn't even helping the look her look for the phone and yada 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 the kardashians representative said that's not what happened the flight attendant felt bad for rushing her and that this passenger's exaggerating i hate to like i mean i don't know i feel like it might be a passenger exaggerating <laughs> oh i mean I don't know. I, I, I love a well-written PR statement. But if you tell me to sit down and buckle my seatbelt, like, Sky Law takes over. Right. But, did she, I mean, she's Kourtney Kardashian. Like, and so if her, her fiancé, 
Travis Barker loses his phone, that phone has things on it. Oh, oh, it has many things on it. Yeah, so, like, it's kind of like, sure, Skyla, but, like, her livelihood and a lot of potential problems are on that phone. (laughs) Skyla. (laughs) Skyla dominates. Nah. (laughs) Phone law. Phone law. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's – it would be very hard to break into that phone, but if it did, the the results would be devastating. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, and who is this? I just feel like it's like she lo- they lost the phone and she was like, I just really need to find the phone. And the flight attendant maybe did feel bad. Like, I'm so sorry to rush you, but she did, we did, you need to sit down. And then the person in first class was like, I can't wait to make some money and report this to the sun. Yeah. Like, yeah. show me the receipts. Like, was this person filming Kourtney Kardashian looking for the phone? Right. That's what I would have done. If if I'm on a first class flight and Travis Barker and Courtney Kardashian are 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 there, I, I'm whipping out the celly and I'm secretly filming them a hundred percent. I would have helped her find the phone. Oh, well, you're a better person than I am. <laughs> well, we're both better people than this lying ass passenger. That's fair. Debunked. That's fair. Stamp of approval. Debunked. I mean, what do we know? But who knows? I'm, I'm siding with the Kardashians. When she, the whole thing with her getting engaged, there was a a meme that was put out that I think was supposed to feel inspirational to people. Uh huh. And it was basically like what Scott couldn't do for 15 years, Travis did in 11 months. Don't ever settle. Which is, I guess, to say that her ex, Scott Disick, they were together for 15 years. They have like two or three kids together, but they never were married. Mm -hmm. And now she's getting engaged to this guy. I was kind of like, why? The Kardashians should never be used as inspiration. Right. A hundred percent. The thing about it is they've built an empire off of defending a murderer and a sex tape. And I... There's a part of me that has to admire that. Oh, I have the utmost respect, but I'm like, I, I'm just saying like, if you're someone, God bless you, but if you're someone who's in a shit relationship with someone who you don't think is going to like, you, you're in a 15 year relationship, whatever the fuck it is. I, I just, I'm like, who is looking at that post and being like, yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like. If if Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are the thing that make you believe that the right person is out there waiting for you, I mean, I guess okay, fine. But like, let me just tell you, I'm just gonna tell you, like, the right person's out there waiting for you. You don't. What Courtney Kardashian's doing has nothing to do with you, right? Right. Don't settle for shit. Yeah. But also, like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I just saw it and I was like, this is weird. Who cares? Who cares? Sorry that we covered an article from The Sun. It's okay. I'm sorry we talked about the Kardashians. <laughs> it was only a matter of time, I felt like. It truly was. It's trashy, trashy podcast. Let's get into our next story from another trashy topic. Hooters adjust policy to make controversial new uniform optional for employees after outcry over skimpy shorts that are like underwear. Hooters is adjusting its uniform policy because they have newer shorts. They have, I mean, there are other shorts, which are referred to in this article as the longer shorts, even though they were very fucking short also. Uh Um, But these newer ones have that like sort of triangular structure. You get a regular pair of short shorts is like a rectangle, a... Mm -hmm. A thin rectangle, but a rectangle. These, the newer shorts where you're, it's like these shorts are built for your butt cheeks to come out the bottom. They kind of have a triangular look. They're like a wedgie. They're like a wedgie. They're physically like a wedgie. And people wear them. I mean, we covered that girl who got a wedgie on her first date and whatever, and got an infection from it. Like, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to wait tables in those. No, I'll We'll post a photo of the shorts, the new shorts, on our Trashy Trashy Instagram, which is Trashy Trashy Pod. 
and you can make the call for yourself, but several employees spoke out on TikTok this week that they feel they were just too revealing for Hooters. Yeah, for Hooters. And there are some employees that like them, but I think, yeah, there was a backlash. And I mean, these are girls who even they like working at Hooters, but they're like, this is, I'm not going to wear these. Yeah, these are a step too far. They wear like the thickest tights, tights under those yeah. shorts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have the tights that the Laker girls wear. Mm-hmm. I wear them when I do <clears throat> wrestling stuff. Yeah. And they're they're pretty thick, but they're not like Hooters thick. Yeah. We when I did show choir, we had thick tights, but I don't think they were through they were Hooters thick. So but I mean essentially Hooters waitresses are wearing pants. Yes, it pants with a short over it. But the point of the thickness of those tights, and this was the point when I was doing show choir too, is uniformity. Like everyone's everyone looks the same, right. you know, include down to like their like not not their skin color, but their the complexion of the skin. <laughs> no one's got weird like legs. Everyone yeah. has the same legs. You also can't have tattoos, wear a lot of jewelry, do anything with your nails, or do any sort of like different hairstyles with at, at Hooters. Yeah, they want to keep a quote all American image. Right. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking of all American, it takes all kinds, especially <laughs> in our next story. The most American of of us all, the Amish. This story comes from us from cncnewsonline.com. Amish buggy driver facing DUI charges. Can I ask you a question before we get into this? Why do you think that the Amish are the most American of us all? Because they they live like the the colonialist and and they're like independent as fuck and they don't conform. And I think that they're very American in that sense. Okay. Hell, and they don't like paying their taxes. What's more American than not wanting to pay your taxes? That's fair. <laughs> you, <laughs> Yep, you got it. No. <laughs> an Amish teen is facing driving under the influence charges after an officer stopped him traveling horse and buggy, and he found him passed out inside. Oh, my God. Talk about oh, a no. self-driving car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody called Waymo. Who? New woman. Waymo, it's a self-driving car company. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. New Wilmington police have charged 19-year-old Enos S. Byler of 129 Leesburg Station Road following a stop that occurred around 1.30 a.m. October 8th on Route 208 in New Wilmington Borough. I do like the names that the Amish people have. Jebediah, Enos, Byler, Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> I mean, like, they're, they are the original hipsters, because those kinds of names are coming back right now. They are, in a big way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, according to a criminal complaint, public safety officer was notified, or notified the police that he passed the horse and buggy going west and saw the male driver who appeared to be unconscious. Another buggy driver helped the officer stop the horse and buggy. The officer woke up the buggy driver after a couple of attempts, noting that he and the buggy smelled of alcohol, the complaint said. Ooh. I just like this story because I get to say buggy over and over again. <laughs> you know, so you're in trouble, man. The there, there's paperwork noted that he had a half case of Coors Light beer in the buggy. He told the police he drank nine of them. And then uh, the guy's father was called to take the buggy home. His... <laughs> His blood alcohol was at 0.162% on nine Coors Lights. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, that's double the limit. That's double the limit that's allowed. No. Yeah. Yes, it's double yes. the limit. Holy shit. Double the 0.08 limit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I could get that drunk on nine Coors Lights. On nine Coors Lights. I know. It takes, it takes a lot to get me drunk nowadays. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> it's expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive to get that drunk. Never, ever drive drunk. Never. This is a complete PSA in all seriousness. We are never endorsing drunk driving. 
No. Let it be a horse or horse a power. Lawnmower. Horse yeah, power. A lawnmower. <laughs> sure. Boat. Horse or horse power. Nay, nay. Yeah. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> we should go into like the ad business for dare or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Um, defendants are considered innocent until gro- until proven guilty or adjudicated in the court of law. So this is all allegedly is what this article is claiming. I mean, it sounds like he admitted it. Yeah, it sounds like he was like, yeah, I was drinking nine Coors Light. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I was passed out because I had nine Coors Lights. He must be doing so much farm labor to make <clears throat> up for this. Like, what can you take away? Like, how do you punish the Amish? You can't read your you can't read your Kindle tonight. Okay, you are not to see Abigail for three sons. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, whatever, they're not fucking listening. Y'all are weird. Yeah, our, our Amish population is zero on the the statistics. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk some shit. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Pay all your taxes. Yeah. So speaking of, damn it, I'm not as good at this as you are. I believe in you. Okay. Speaking of being a a shithead. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> According to Newsweek.com, fears of head could be split open as a man seen hitting baseball into Grand Canyon. The headline is confusing. So we're going to explain, in my opinion. Yeah. So basically what happened is a man was seen on TikTok hitting a baseball with a baseball bat into the Grand Canyon near the Yavapai Geology Geology Museum on the South Rim. So a lot of, you know, it went viral and there's a bunch of comments of people being like, oh, sick, like I want to do that. Then there's other comments being like, that's super fucking dangerous. People hike down there. Yeah. Yeah. It could split someone's head open, essentially. The original video poster does not know the man. It was just a bystander. We'll post the video on our social media. There was another guy who decided, like, who wanted to see how far, like, a rock would go. And he threw a rock down in the Grand Canyon. And it, like, hit a hiker in the head and he died immediately (gasps) that's horrible yeah so don't put shit into the grand canyon just go look it's not a big trash can no it's not me and eric are yeah we're the trash cans (laughs) have you ever been to the grand canyon yes i've been twice it's so cool we should go yeah, I'd like to go. I've it's never. It's like an eight-hour drive. I know. I don't know why I haven't done it yet. I just I haven't done it. Yeah. yeah, the first time my dad literally pulled like a Clark Griswold. Like we got there and we looked at it, and then he was like, "Well, y'all ready to go?" And I was like, "Wait, what? No, we're at the Grand Canyon. We're going to be here for hours studying the Majesty." But then you're like, "It's just a really big hole." <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like. You want to be there for hours, but then at the same time, it's like, all right, well, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like to me, like something like a stop. Yeah, it was on a it was on a cross country road trip, so that was definitely um, like a stop. Can I say just randomly that something about the pandemic has like shifted my ability to have a road trip like I because I you know like we I feel like I did a lot of road trips as a kid because we would go back and forth between Colorado and California a lot which is about Mm -hmm. a 15 to 17 hour drive and we've also gone up to Washington so I feel like I kind of like was like I don't really like road trips like flying is better unless it's to Vegas I don't mind that drive but then the pandemic hit and suddenly I was like all road trip anywhere Let's go. Yeah. Like, let's do it. And I think also because I'm older and have to pay for everything all the time. Ugh. And so, like, you know, it it makes you second guess. Like, oh, I'm going to fly into this place and then 
rent a car. Like, oh, geez, that's so expensive. Like, I'd rather just, you know, whatever. So I'm more open to the ideas of road trips. So I feel like the Grand Canyon might come soon for me. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I can't wait to hear you report what trashy thing you do at the Grand Canyon. Well, maybe you'll be there. Oh, oh, don't tip me with a good time. (laughs) Well, maybe I'll go with you to the Grand Canyon. Okay. You know where I won't go with you, though? Where? A zoo in Australia. Why not? I'm sorry. That's just where I draw the line in this friendship. All right. That's fine. Uh, uh, There's a story about a zoo in Australia coming up if you'd like to talk about it. Okay. I'll talk about it, but I won't go with you. Coming to us from the NewYorkPost.com, bad boy alligator removed from lagoon for hostile behavior. (laughs) This Australian zoo has their very own Kanye, and he's a bit of a handful. A male alligator named Kanye was extracted from the lagoon because he was showing signs of major hostility towards other animals and their handler. Do you think that they named him Kanye before or after he started acting like a bad boy? A bad boy? Uh, Probably before. I feel like if you're named Kanye, you've just got bad boy in your DNA. You know, I don't use the word bad boy when I think of Kanye. I use more of like, can someone help help him? him? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like used to have such great music, boy, and now someone please help, boy. Yeah. Donda, Donda, Donda. When I think of bad boy, I think of maybe the lead singer of Puddle of Mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yuck. Like, <laughs> anyways, this is an 880-pound alligator. He, was, he kept charging the zookeepers and displaying aggressive behavior towards the other 54 alligators during the mating season. The wildlife park explained that Kanye would be kept in isolation for a short while to cool down. Australian Reptile Park Director Tim Faulkner said that Kanye has come out of hibernation explosive, therefore a danger to himself to, and to the other alligators and staff. Kanye has made... Uh, hold on. Let me get dropped down into Australia. Okay. Raise up blades. Raise up lights. Raise up lights. Kanye has made other alligators very tense. He's a young bloke full of testosterone, and he's raising havoc right now. So the best thing to do is send him to a naughty corner for some quiet time out. Okay. (laughs) I love that everyone has their thing to drop into an accent. Yeah, I was told you should say raise up lights, and that's razor blades. Raise up lights? Raise up lights? American alligators? Ugh. (laughs) (laughs) All right, old news. That's how I get into it, but that's kind of New Zealand old news have one of the strongest jaw pressures of any animal and one bite can be life-threatening so our amazing team had to take extreme care during the removal the zoo released a wild video of a team zook of zookeepers removing the gator from the lagoon and putting him in an isolation area i'm so sorry it just came to me we have a listener who's australian who lives in la one of the most beautiful people i've ever seen truly she's stunning Okay. Anyways, I just, I, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, do that accent and not go, oh, damn it. She's pretty and so nice and funny. And so, so kind oh and so what funny. Are what are we doing? And a fan of the show. Oh my God. <laughs> I got, I don't even remember what we're talking about. Well, alligators have been making a lot of news recently. A cannibal gator recently made headlines when he ate up another gator in South Carolina. Whoa. Damn. It was Viral video was shown as the six-foot gator being eaten by a larger animal as it held it down underwater. Damn. I'm going to South Carolina soon. I For a wedding. No, to fight off this gator and to avenge oh, the one it ate. Oh, fuck yeah. Good. Avenge me. <laughs> avenge me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be crazy. You know what else is crazy? What? Playing flute while you drive. Yeah, according to CP24.com, driver in Burlington caught playing the flute with both hands, police say. It goes without saying that both hands should be on the wheel when driving, but police in Burlington say they caught a flautist flouting that rule on Wednesday. (laughs) All right, journalism is fun. Sometimes you get to have a lot of fun. Sure. In a tweet, 
Halton Regional Police said they spotted a driver playing his flute with both hands while he was conducting a distracting driving enforcement in the area. Oh, so this officer basically pulled up next to this guy at a red light and he like the guy was like whatever practicing and then when it turned green he kept playing and just also started driving again i mean when you got shit to do that's called multitasking i respect this driver well sure i mean you know within seconds though can you drop that flute fast enough if something if a a child runs out in front of the car I mean, you just had to pump on the brakes, right? That's feet control, not not hand control. What the? Doesn't the wheel do something stupid? Yeah, you're. you're I mean, you're right. I put in quotation marks. Okay, rude. <laughs> just, uh, no, this is dangerous as fuck. <laughs> Somebody call Wama. What was it? The self driving car company. Oh, Waymo. <laughs> Somebody call Waymo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was in a Waymo vehicle. We don't know. How could we have known? Because I've never heard of it. And I believe that this cop probably knows as much as me. Police added the driver was also following along to an iPad at the time of the alleged infraction. Do not misreport that. It is an iPod. Did I say and iPad? Yes. And that's oh. <laughs> important because an iPad is still of this century. <laughs> an <Yes>. iPod... <laughs> I left alone with my flip razor. Yeah. The Elms, the officer said, I cannot advise what song was being played on the flute at the time. That means I don't know what song was being played. Or it was playing some crazy shit. Like (laughs) playing like my neck, my back, like my pussy and my crack, but on the flute. But on the flute. (laughs) Yeah. Uh (laughs) Don't come for us, music rights. <laughs> That's wild. Another man had a run-in with the police, according to our next story from audacity.com. A Michigan man running from cops gets lost in woods and has to call 911 for help. Oops. Oopsie. A northern Michigan man is facing charges after he got lost while trying to escape the police and had to call 911. Sometimes the fun is just in the chase. It's true. Kevin William Teague, 43, was arraigned in the 86th District Court in Grand Traverse County on October 14th and set to appear again for the hearing on next Tuesday. So he was running from the police because he was, uh, it was B&E's, you know, breaking into homes. And she, there was a woman who was watching TV when she saw a man walk into the living room. And the woman at first thought it was her husband then screamed when she realized it wasn't. And then um, the guys, her husband came downstairs and said, Hey, can you get out? And then (laughs) I guess he left. That just sounds like a very calm recounting of like, get the fuck out of my house. (laughs) Yeah, that's like a big fear of mine. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's probably a big fear of a lot of people. To be honest. Super scary. I'm, I'm unique. I'm afraid of someone breaking into my home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. My biggest fear is kind of crazy. Um, I don't want someone to break into my home while I'm there. <laughs> well, oh, anyway. it's just me. But um, so he ran away. Uh, and then the cops were like looking for him and they had a uh, K-19 even look for him, but couldn't find him. And then eventually this guy, I guess, looked around and was like, where am I? I I'm not going to throw down that he's a time traveler. OK, I'm not going to say that, mm-hmm. but I am going to say that maybe maybe he was time traveling and this was his body left behind doing things that he had no control over. Like, I just imagine him walking into this house, like, kind of zombified, and then being like, leave, and then he, like, left, and then he's walking into the forest, and then he comes back from time traveling, Mm -hmm. finds himself in the forest, and goes, I need to call 911, I don't know where I am. Yeah. (laughs) I love your time travel theory. Thank you. Yeah. It makes sense of a dark, cruel world. It, It truly does. 
He faces one count of breaking and entering without permission and one count of resisting and obstructing police. Bond was set at ten thousand or at one thousand dollars. That's a pretty low bond. Yeah. Ten like yeah. I don't I I would need someone to get charged a little bit more. Speaking of needing something to explain this crazy existence, are you ready for the dumpster fire of the week? Oh, I'm I'm so ready. It's time for the dumpster fire of the week. <laughs> Into here. <laughs> This is according to BuzzFeedNews.com. Crazy days and nights readers fear the gossip site has gone QAnon. I don't care about made up Satanism or pedo rings. The very first post I read here was about Gary Busey trying to use a gold trim, was trying to use gold double loons as legitimate currency and TBH. I would just like more of that, please. That's a weird quote to have on record of yourself. Yeah, especially an opening statement of an article. So... <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Crazy Day and Nights is a like predecessor of Dumas, which is like a gossip site. And he has a podcast and a website where he talks about Hollywood blind items. Was that And mean? like this A-list actress from Down Under was spotted with da 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 like blinds are where they don't exactly say who it is, but they give enough clues where you can figure out Oh, this is about Nicole Kidman. Oh, okay. So like, and those are like those weird kind of like ads that you see on other sites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Crazy Days and Nights is run by Inti, aka Entertainment Lawyer, who claims to be a 300 pound entertainment lawyer who gets all of his gossip. And so Inti runs a podcast and this website and instead of just being like the fun blinds like it used to be, like, oh, is Beyonce surrogacy or, you know, um, all this, it's like come into like QAnon territory recently. And it's a bummer. Like I had to unfollow and unsubscribe. Did you follow it for a while? For a long time. I loved Crazy Days and Nights. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, but now it's all QAnon. Yeah. So since 2006, people have come to Crazy Days and Nights for blind items that run the gamut from true, like Kelly Kyoko was getting a divorce, to ridiculous Beyonce faked her pregnancies, to fantastical, like Anna Wintour and Bob Marley had a secret baby together. So it's earned a reputation for being endlessly entertaining and pretty prescient. And so recently it's fallen into this like satanic cabal of Trump hating, child abusing money elites run American politics and media. So basically like nothing is true anymore. It's all just QAnon theories. Yeah. And it's a real bummer for those of us who enjoy gossip. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously their founder has uh, found themselves in QAnon. Yeah, so basically they're making up like that there's these like Hollywood pedophile rings and that there's these rape rings and like all sorts of like horrific QAnon adjacent stuff. Is this like the equivalent of like if Perez Hilton or like TMZ went QAnon or is it not that big? Yeah, I mean, they're not that big, but they're well known. Like if you like celebrity gossip, you would know about like Dumas and Crazy Mm. Days and Nights. Okay. I mean, this is kind of a bummer, and hopefully most people are a little bit keen to, like, being able to identify that it's gone a little off the rails and that there's not still people taking it, like, seriously in a way that it used to. Yeah. I mean, it it's not as well recognized as, like, Perez Hilton, but it had, like, a pretty loyal following. And they're, even if it's not outright Q, it's, like, dog whistles for Q. So weird. It's so weird. And it's like they're they're in puzzle form. Like this A-list actress from Down Under who once had a baby with another A-list actor. You know, it's like it's the part of the fun is figuring out who they're talking about. Mm. But it's just gone like it's gone crazy. Bummer. Yeah. I mean, I mean, CNDA, CDAN, Crazy Days and Nights, like. 
exposed some casting couches and oh wow some me too posts so like they've done some good work but like they're not they don't believe in mis- lizard people outright but they're willing to believe that there's like a cabal of like hollywood elites that are running stuff <sighs> weird mhm i feel like i need like a i feel like we need to plug like a qanon support <laughs> Yeah. But I don't know of one. I don't know how to recover somebody from QAnon. Um, uh, luckily, my family is like regular crazy, not QAnon crazy. Yeah. So I'm like very fortunate that I haven't had, but I haven't lost a loved one to QAnon. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even think my dad knows what it is. Because I was like, are any of your you know friends or employees like, into Q and he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Q never on. mind. <laughs> never mind. Don't Google it. Please don't Google it. Don't go down that rabbit path. Yeah. I don't know. If if it's happening, I don't know about it. And ignorance is bliss with that. Mm-hmm. Are you hoarding anything this week? I am. Um, as I mentioned in my uh YM trash, we went out last night. We went to the LA Philharmonic, which was great. At the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Nice little date night. We got all dressed up. And afterwards, we went to we went to this place called General Lee's, which is a cocktail bar in Chinatown, which was really cool. But we we want to go back on a weekday because we felt like too old to be there on a Friday. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, I guess Friday's a weekday, but you know what I mean, like a, a school night. But so when we, we had one drink and we were like, okay, like let's maybe we'll find somewhere else to go or we'll find some food or something. And as we were walking back to our car, we passed this other bar that like from the outside, like looked kind of rough and tumble. And like mm-hmm. some of the people who were outside, like smoking, even we were like, is this a biker bar? Like, I don't think we should, let's not go in there. But as we were walking past, we looked, we couldn't help ourselves. So we looked through the door and we were like, oh shit, that bar looks really fucking cool. And so we stopped, we turned around and we went in. That bar is called Melody Lounge. It's in Chinatown. It was so cool. The cocktails were so good. Highly recommend if you're an LA person and you like want to like, I don't know, like I would take someone there who I was like trying to like impress, you know? Mm, okay. But uh, imp- let me, let me rephrase. I was trying to impress them with, hey, look, I know where cool shit is. Not like you're trying to impress them because you, you know, like fancy. It's It wasn't fancy. It was just cool. It was like very Tarantino esque, like oh, okay. it was. It, so it was cool. Um, so if you're like one of your cool friends is coming into town into L.A. and they're like, where are the cool places? Yeah, you could be like, oh, I'll take you to a cool place. I know just the one. I know it's just Melody the jo- one. Melody yeah. Lounge in Chinatown. When we were in that first bar, there like the DJ was like playing music. Go figure. But like all of it, all of the like young children were like dancing and knew the words. And I looked at Taylor. I was like, I've never heard this song in my life. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh my God, when did this happen? Like, I, cause it, I was like, it kind of had like the, the feeling of like 90s R&B, which I'm like, I would know that. Right. But it it must be new because I don't know it. And I'm like, this sucks. Like, I what the fuck happened to me? It's not like I knew all the music in Melody Lounge either. But, like, no one was singing and dancing to it. It was just kind of on. So I didn't feel as bad about myself. But life is weird. It's weird to watch young young women dance and sing songs in a bar that you don't know and you remember not too long ago that you were one of those women and then you're like wow life is fleeting i am i'm getting older like it's over i'm getting older i can't go back <sighs> sorry anyways what uh, what are you hoarding this week <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm hoarding you getting older no uh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I know that feeling. Uh, I'm really. 
<laughs> a show, it's a documentary, a three part documentary so far on HBO Max called The Way Down, which Didn't is I about the, this. Did you? Who cares? Keep going. Well, I'm, I'm hoarding it now. It's about the cult of Gwen Shamblin, this religious leader who basically teaches intuitive eating. Like, don't eat until your stomach grumbles. That's when it'll tell you that you're hungry. And don't glorify the food. Glorify the Lord. And it is a wild ride. Yeah, it's super crazy. Um, I can't wait until you get through the whole thing because uh, it's not even like finished yet. It, 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 I, I'm not spoiling anything. I think to say that it ends with it to be continued. Yeah, yeah, it's real good, uh, especially if you grew up in like the Church of Christ environment that I grew up in, which is wild. I, I had a family member legitimately tell me like. Like the Church of Christ wasn't founded until like the 1830s, 1840s, but they were like, oh no, this has been like the original church. And I was like, no, like that was like Catholicism. And then we spun off and this is a spinoff of the spinoff. And it was like, <laughs> I had to have like that discussion with a family member. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just let you believe what you want to believe. Like it's not, I'm not going to do any, I'm not doing anything here. You know, you don't understand. Frasier started with Frasier in Seattle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no. No. He started on Cheers. What are you throwing away? I'm throwing out boomer cell phone etiquette. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now this this covers a wide range of of, of topics, of course, from you know the greatest hits of. Why are you always using ellipses? Are you mad or are you unsure about something or uh -huh. what? Why are you using dot, dot, dot after text messages? Like, does someone not understand that like, hey, will you do this for me? Okay, is the, is the response. But it's okay, dot, dot, dot. It's like, what? Um, what else so there's, is there? <laughs> that's, the, that's a big one. But specifically what set me off was – we were at the Philharmonic. We're listening to a symphony. And there's a man, an older gentleman, in front of me who's texting, like not consistently, but like just needed to answer a quick text, you know, which I think is so rude mm -hmm. at a show and a symphony. Like your stupid fucking phone is lighting up. And like also your font is huge, which also like um, so is mine. Um, he was texting about getting apple fritters. I, c I could see it. I was reading it. <laughs> so I was like, what is so like important? A jitterbug that was like large text? No, he had like a fucking Android, which like I always wonder, like who's buying Androids? It's it's this boomers. Guy. It's boomers who go to the symphony because I was looking around and I'm like, all these fucking people have Androids. Like, <laughs> Jesus. And like, I'm guilty of some stuff. I have the big font too. I do that because I don't want to get crow's feet. But I, and I talk on my, I talk on speakerphone. Okay, I'm going to um, admit it. I talk on speakerphone sometimes. But you can't do it always. I don't do it in public. Right. And I don't answer my phone when I'm busy. That's one that Mama Trash Can is awful guilty of. I'm coming <laughs> for you now, Boomer. Quit answering your phone when you're busy. Yeah. Or quit texting out loud on your watch. This yeah. is, these are all Boomer cell phone etiquette, and I'm throwing that shit out. Get rid of it. I love it. They like to accuse, like, millennials of everything. But then mm -hmm. also, like, oh, like, you know, these younger generations, like, they, they're ad ad addicted to their phones. Like, that might be true. But of the very few people I saw of my age <laughs> at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, like watching a symphony, we didn't have our fucking phones out. Anyways, yeah. what are you throwing out? Uh, I am throwing out the hiccups. What oh. evolutionary function do you serve? Why? <laughs> I think it's a flaw in the system. It's a bug and it sucks. And I woke up this morning with the hiccups. I get hiccups, especially when I'm about to talk to people at my job. So right before meetings or calls and I'm like, what, what is your, why, 
Why do humans have hiccups? Like, what do they serve? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Do you have like a a tried and true hiccup trick to get rid of them? No, there are no there are no get rid of hiccup tricks. Like they just run their course. And anybody that tells you uh, put a spoonful of sugar on the back of your tongue and then hold your breath for thirty seconds, uh, it's that's witchcraft. None of that works. Okay, but I have one that works. Okay, <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> Okay, so you grab a paper towel or a napkin of sorts, right? And you place it and you grab a drink, like water, what have you. Should be water. You place the paper towel over the opening of the cup, like all the way around. And then you drink the water through the paper towel and it will get rid of your hiccups. I'm being serious. Okay. Okay, silence isn't good for a podcast, but just know my jaw is agape. You're like, next time you get a bad case of the hiccups, like, just go grab a cup, wa- a little bit of water in there, paper towel over it, drink through the paper towel, like, just, like, drink like normal, but, like, you're drinking through the paper towel. I don't know if it's, like, because we have to do, like, extra, like, air sucking in order to get it through. I don't know what the fuck it does, but it <laughs> works, okay. dude. It fucking <laughs> works. Okay. I will take advantage of this next time I get the hiccups. Trust me on this. I, it's witchcraft, of course. You do have you have to make some concessions, and you know you will become haunted after that. Mm-hmm. But like, th- you're right. The hiccups suck. Where can the people find you? At Cass Cardenas on Instagram and Twitter, and on the Nooner Podcast on the Smodcast Network. Love Where do they it. find you? At Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram, and at Gilly Gal on the Twitter. As always, you can find this podcast at Trashy Trashy Pod on Instagram and on Twitter or at our website, TrashyTrashyPodcast.com, where you can submit user stories while you're trash or send us stories to cover on the podcast. And as always, we love you and thank you and um, lots of besitos. Hey, Cass. What's going on, girl? Stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Bye.